Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to Open TTD Tutorials. And we're back on our main tutorial map, and that's because uh, I'm ready to record quite possibly the last um, tutorial. It's the last planned one, anyway. Uh, if people comment with lots of questions uh, on the videos, I will make bonus ones after the official end of the series, so uh, I will still be adding those bonus ones. If you're watching quite some time after this one's recorded, there might already be some bonus ones. But um, that's up to you guys and uh, how many questions you ask. So, when you're starting a game, what do you look for? How do you build it? And what can you do to make it efficient? And then make a successful company. That's one of the main things I'm looking at today. And the reason for this is, is that um, we've been looking at about how to put lines in, how to put roads in, um, how to send things about all over the map, but we haven't actually done anything that is necessarily profitable. So that's today. One of the first things I do when I go into a new map is I go up to this icon here, into the Towns directory. Now in the Towns directory, it lists all the towns that are on the map, and you can change what they're ordered by. So you can either order them by name or order them by population. Now I do that and I check out the uh, few largest towns. And if you click on the town, it'll take you to them. So uh, at the moment, that's, our, uh, that's the largest town on the map, followed by this one, followed by that one, followed by this one. And what I do is I look for a couple of large towns that aren't too far away from each other. For example, here, these two towns are in the probably top, uh, I think they're in the top three uh, in, in terms of size. And that means that there's going to be a lot of passengers there available uh, if we want to stick in a railway station. Now I did, uh, when we talked about laying in stations, not just railway stations, but stations in general, um, we talked about the catchment area, this um, purpley bluey colour, and you can see as I move it over the area it accepts various different things. Uh, there's a bank up here, and uh, we'll talk about valuables later. Um, but you can see that uh, you really just want to maximize the amount of buildings and get the larger buildings under that area of, the, of all that uh, purple. So uh, that is um, why I look in the towns directory to find a nice big town to start. And then uh, connect them up with uh, some sort of service. What if you don't have big towns where you want? For example, over here, we've got a few towns. They're not really that big. What can you do about it? Well, the rate a town grows depends on its transport links. So what you can do is you can put something in. Um, you might start with a smaller uh, train station. Let's, let's just put something in. Let's put something in there, just... Uh, just for the sake of it, and say we've got lines going off to a nearby, uh, nearby town that might be uh, might be big, it might not, but we want to make this place bigger and more successful, so we get more passengers. Well, one method that uh, is quite common to do that is to add even more stations. So I just added a bus depot there, and uh, we'll put a bus station over there as well. Oh, they don't, they refuse to allow it. Okay, well, if you have problems with uh, companies, ref uh, local authorities refusing to allow things, very often what I do is just plant some trees, plant some trees. It costs uh, a good bit of money, but if you have to have that uh, station in there, they will then let you. Okay, so, and then what you can do is put probably, um, well, in a, a town this size, I would say two, uh, two buses in. Uh, two, or rather two bus stations and just to get uh, get some going between the two I'm just going to clone that so we can have uh, probably, we'll have four I think yes four and get them on the way and what it is is that um, that town will have uh, more things more transport links and more passengers the more links and more passengers a town has the faster it grows so that's going to grow nicely around our train so in the larger towns, say something like this, you might want to put four in if they'll let you. So let's see, uh, uh, let's see if they'll let us put one, 
put one here. Uh, one here. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, just, just for. Mm, it's a bit difficult. So there's not a lot of road. We'll put one up here. We won't, because it doesn't work. We'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll extend the roads out. And then we'll put uh, one here, because that's still got some in the caption area. And uh, one over there, I think. There we go. And if we got buses linking all those bus stations, this particular village would grow in size quite considerably compared to the other ones. And that is exactly what you can see has happened here. This is by far uh, the biggest town on the map. We're looking, ooh, about, there's about 600, so it's about 800, um, yeah, about 800 more population than the next biggest town. So uh, that just goes to show, we've got lots of things coming in, airports now, it will grow. And sometimes just put in bus depots, going to and from each other is one of the good ways to get that to grow. So that will make uh, towns bigger, capture areas, capture more stuff, more stuff, more passengers, more passengers, more filled trains, more filled trains, more profits. <sighs> okay, so that's increasing town size. What's next on the list? Next one on the list is this button here. This button tells you graphs of various different things. I'm holding down on it at the moment. If you just click on it, it gives you your operating profit. And uh, as you can see, uh, our operating profit is quite good. If you want to check this out, it's actually quite a good thing to show how well your business is doing at the moment. It doesn't take into account uh, expenditures on building stuff and things like that. What it does, it takes the money going in versus the money going out on the transport, and it gives you a nice line graph. Um, generally you want it to be going up, sometimes it will fluctuate depending on what you're doing. But the one I'm most interested in is if you click and hold and go all the way down to cargo payment rates. This graph here, and I'm going to try and enlarge it as big as I can on the screen. That'll do I think. Uh, this graph here shows you uh, how much you get for your cargo. Now the further cargo goes along a track, the more you'll get paid, because you get paid per for the distance. So if a cargo goes 20 squares in a day, you get paid uh, for each of those 20 squares. If it goes 25 squares, you get paid even more. But the longer it takes to get that distance, the less you get paid. And this is what this graph shows. So along the bottom, the days in transit, the longer the days in transit goes, you can see that the amounts that you get for delivering that cargo trails off. So I'm just going to disable all for a second and we'll look at passengers and mail. And you can see how uh, mail produces more profit um, for the distance traveled than passengers. So why am I showing you this in particular? Okay, yes, so you get the idea. The quicker your um, delivery is made, the more profit you will make. But also, what you are delivering matters. So you don't necessarily just choose passengers or just choose mail. Usually it's a good staple because you get, it's quite a reliable thing to transport. But as you can see, there's lots of different things you can transport. And looking at the top ones here, we have uh, valuables, uh, goods, uh, coal. Um, I would say that they are the top three. Okay, and you can see that if you're delivering it quickly, uh, goods is better than coal. Uh, but if you're delivering it over a larger distance and you're taking your time with your deliveries, you've got really slow trains, coal actually pays off better at the end. So it depends how long it's taken to get there. And you can see that if you're nice and quick with your deliveries, valuables is by far the best thing to transfer, but you'll need a bank in both cities to be able to do that. Otherwise, your catchment will not um, tell you to transport valuables. And this is where I said I was coming back to this bank. So if I just get a train station, uh, you can see a city without valuables. doesn't matter if you pull along that right in the middle there. It's not going to let you um, transport valuables. And you can't put it there because there's buildings in the way. But as soon as you get that bank under the catchment area, it's like, um, it's like a, a, a factory or a farm. Uh, you have to get it in the catchment area and all of a sudden you're allowed to do valuables. 
but these banks only appear in cities once they reach a certain population. That's another reason why to increase the population is a good idea. So that is a couple of other things. Watch what you're transporting. Industries are usually a good way of making money because a lot of these uh, cargo payments, um, the passengers one is the least well paid and that's usually the one that a lot of people go for. Towards the beginning you might want to try and pick up something. You won't be able to do valuables so coal or goods is usually a quite a good one. Coal. If you're going to do coal it's a good idea to use the map. And a lot, uh, it's also, this also applies with other industries as well. This map icon, if you click world map and open it up, and you can extend that. And depending on the size of the map you're playing, then you can change the settings. Now this industries button here shows you where all the different industries are. So we can see that these red ones here in the middle, yeah, if you can see quite clearly on this video, they're power stations. We've got a few of them in the middle. And the black ones are coal mines. So what you can do, you can look around the map and find where these coal um, stations are, coal mines are, and these power stations, and see if you can get a good couple of coal stations, uh, coal mines near each other that you can then deliver to a power station. If that's not the case, you can look for farms and factories. Um, I can see a farm and a factory nearby there, but there's no, there's really not very far nearby. But this map hasn't got a lot of that sort of thing in. You can see here that uh, uh, we've got two coal mines quite near each other, um, sometimes uh, delivering from one to the other and then from that to the power station might be a good plan. So using that map is always a good plan because it gets you a good feel of what industries are around that you can use. And uh, using those industries to your uh, benefit is another good way of making sure you've got a lot of goods to move uh, to make a lot of profit. So that is town size, different types of cargo, and using the map to find the cargo. Another thing you can do is make sure that you have good ratings. Now let's see, uh, have we got any trains on this line? We have, we've got, looks like one train. This station here I've just clicked on, if you click on ratings it says very poor and that's because we've probably got one train chugging backwards and forwards and it's breaking down every five minutes. Um, so keep your trains well repaired, they just broke down again. What we're going to do is we're going to get a new vehicle and we're going to get uh, one of these reliable diesel ones, pop a few passenger carriages in there and then uh, I'm going to give it some orders first. And what I'm demonstrating here is a more efficient way to deal with passengers. There we go. So I'm going to clone that train. Then I'm going to clone that train again, pick up that clone, and I'm going to make a full load at one station. And then I'll clone it again. And uh, So the uh, 10 is a clone of 9, and 9 is a full load at uh, one station. And we'll put the other trains as a full load other station. So that using the uh, method to have full load, there's lots of screen, I'll just clear it all for you. You'll be able to see that along this line D, um, I'm going to send him to the train depot because he's going to just get in the way of our example. And we'll let these four trains run on this line. I'm going to fast forward it for a while. And you can see that uh, this train is staying at the station and filling up. And our ratings have, for passengers have already gone from very poor up to a medium sort of level. We're just about to get past 50%. So um, let's just revert that train round. Now, this um, signal system here is an intermediate sort of system. So. Um, they're going to get a little stuck. We'll, uh, we'll not to do the advanced ones if you want to see more advanced ones. Uh, the advanced railway tutorials were just before this one. Okay. And you can see that they are sat in that station and they are picking up everything rather than just going in and going out. Okay, so can I get him to skip orders? There we go. And the same will be happening on this other end now. Um, where's this? There's one, there's one train there. And 
I'm gonna just send this guy off early because he's uh, he's getting in the way. You skip your order. There we go. And because there's always at least one train waiting at the station, the ratings will just go through the roof. The higher the ratings, the more people that use it, the more people that use it, the more profit you'll make. So um, that is another important way to make more money. You can see there, and the ratings of this place, ratings, they were poor on the passenger side of things. Already 32, 33%. I know I'm fast forwarding the game though. But uh, you see now the first train has left because it got full of passengers. This one's on 35%, 39% loaded. If that other train doesn't get back in time, the ratings will start to go down. But as long as you've got a train in there most of the time, you should be okay. So there we are, the ratings got up to 56 they are going down now. I think it's probably because we've got a bit of a blockage at this end because I've put more trains on this line than the line can handle um, because I was trying to demonstrate the point. So there we go. Another thing to do to increase your profitability. So how should you start out? Mm. We've already discussed the types of things you could do and how to look for it on the map. Um, but how big should you go? What, how how far should you go? Well, it depends on the technology and how reliable your trains and engines are. If they're not very reliable, they're going to break down constantly. And that way, you don't want them going very far. Um, I'm just thinking, if I was starting uh, again on this map, I, uh, I would probably be happy putting a, a line uh, between these two cities and um, getting a couple of trains going backwards and forwards with some passengers. Um, I would not spend too much all at once. Uh, another tip for making money towards the beginning is don't go in and build whopping great big four laned railways right at the very beginning um, and then uh, expect you to have some money left. It's not going to work. Um, you're going to run out of money and you're not going to be able to get much of a profit going very quickly. So don't go around building a shed ton of these sorts of things. Okay, mainly just do the two lines to start with. And leave yourself space to expand afterwards. Or even just start with one line, with one train going backwards and forwards. Some of the best companies I've started on this game have started with just one train going between two stations, filling up one end, going back and forward, and then just adding a second train. And uh, that one was coal. But um, it's, it's good to build it up. Don't go all out, try and create a massive network at the beginning, because you, you will burn yourself out if you're not careful. Other tips, things like don't do what I've just done here and build straight through farmland. If you can, build round it. That small length there was 47,000. If I delete all this farmland first and then put a line through, that line cost 11,000. So um, that's the difference between the two. Deleting the farmland itself also costs a lot of money. So that's the difference. So um, go round farmland towards the beginning. If you are trying to put a station near a farm, put it as far away as possible until it accepts it. Right? Don't put it right next to it. You've got all that catchment area to work with. So put it right over here. So you're not going this extra little bit. And then try and just do a thin line out. Also think, uh, where's that farm closest to? Let's see if there's another example. Hmm. Okay, sometimes on farmland there is gaps that you can work with, so you could probably use that gap, put your station in, um, and then you would only have to build across one part of farmland. So that is good as well. When it comes to vehicles, don't skim on the vehicles themselves. For example, um, let's look into this here and just say depends when you're starting your game at what year you start it but uh, you might not have many options but look at the options and look and weigh it all out what what is going to be good what can you do 
and usually the best ones for me are not necessarily the speed but I look at the reliability on a train line you don't want stuff uh, getting the whole all the lines plugged up um, reliability for me is one of the most important things some people who want to use aircraft not just trains and buses and so forth find that that is a good way to start because to start off with you only need to just place a couple of airports uh, in each location um, I'm going to put one there, can I put one there? No I can't put one there, no uh, there's not much room at the minute. Oh, there we'll put one there. Okay, so that is 50,000 for the larger one. You probably start off with smaller ones. Um, but that is how much we spent just going through that farmland with one piece of track. So, yeah, there we go. We'll put one there. And there's another 50. The only problem with aeroplanes is towards the beginning, it's going to be a bit of a boring start if you haven't got a lot of money to start with. So, you're looking at a good probably 200,000 at this sort of level payout, uh, not payout, um, layout you've got to, a lot to spend on the aircrafts to get them going buses and so forth are usually a good one to start with they're relatively low, low cost you can use existing roads within a town like this maybe expand them a little bit and just get a little network of buses going because if you get a lot of people waiting at these uh, Waiting at these uh, bus stations, you will you will uh, get a lot of uh, money from it. <coughs> and do see if I can give a little example going. So, new vehicle. Let's put that in there. Fourteen thousand, relatively cheap compared to an aircraft. So I'm just going to get it to go around all the stations. I'm going to clone it. We'll get five of them going round. And uh, get rid of that off the screen. And there you can see they just start to work, make their way around. And they just tick over it nicely, the profits. They've spread themselves out fairly much by themselves. You're only getting 17 there, 19 there, you know, 11 here and there. But it's a reliable source of income and it will make this city grow. So uh, it's a good way to start. And then sometimes bringing in aircraft later on is better. Um, aircraft over larger distances make more money because of the speeds that some of them can go. So uh, there we have it. Um, a few tips about actually starting in Transport Tycoon and being profitable. Start where you uh, know where the big cities are using the town map. Have a good look at the world map for industries that are near each other that you can start working on. Link around your um, different cities and so forth, avoiding farmland unless you have to go in to work with the farms. Put lots of buses and other, I mean, uh, other services in a town and it will grow bigger and make your town more profitable. Get your vehicles to uh, there we are. Get your vehicles to fill up on um, their goods and cargo so that they can uh, get better ratings and you get more people uh, visiting and coming and using the stations. And above all, have fun. Enjoy the game. And uh, look at the last one as well was the cargo payment rates. And see which cargo you think how uh, how it's good to uh, to do because this does change over time. Well, there we go. That's uh, my tips for this episode. That's my entire wealth of knowledge that I've put on there. I probably know a bit more than what I've given you, but um, it's digging it out. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's it for now. Um, leave any comments you wish to. Say uh, what you enjoyed about the series, if you, uh, if you liked particular things. Uh, what you feel could have been in there. I am going to be doing a Let's Play, but I will probably start that. I'll probably have a break, and the first videos might start coming out 
beginning to mid of October of this year. So uh, we'll be having a bit of a break on that one. And I will do some more videos if you wish. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching this series. I hope it's been useful for you all. Continue to leave your comments. They've been great so far. And until next time, whenever that may be, goodbye. <laughs>